Hi everyone, welcome back again. This is Dana. It is Monday. It is the 22nd of June. Wow. I've said it before, the month is flying by. Today was a very busy day for me. It was one of those days we all have to endure where you have your housework to do, where you know it's time to vacuum the house. It's time to clean those bathrooms. It's, you know, it's all that stuff we have to do every week. And and today was my day to get that done. So that kind of took up part of my morning. I had um, some phone calls, uh, business phone calls to make about appointments. And, um, and then I had to fix lunch for myself. And Coco uh, wanted to join me for lunch. <laughs> she likes to to sit right next to me while I'm eating and hope and hope and beg for a little morsel. She likes vegetables and I'm okay with giving her vegetables and so I try to do that every now and then. But um, the big thing also I had to do today was buy groceries. And so I, I found myself doing other things other than stitching, but life things, you know, that you have to do most of the day today. And today's um, whip I chose to meet a prompt, two prompts actually, and um, the first one's in the 24 hours of cross stitch. It's the June acrostic, and the words we're spelling out are day and night. And so for my second A, the A that begins the word and, I had chosen to do Autumn Arbor for obvious reasons. It starts with A. Um, and so this is just a reminder of what it looks like. I started this in Stitch Mania, and when I started it in Stitch Mania, I did this entire piece right here. That was the one I got done. Now, I came back today, and I was going to start here in the middle and work my way up and over like this and get the topper done. And I was well on my way to doing that when I discovered that I had started this leaf, this little green leaf here in that row. I was gonna do the center here. And I started that green leaf because I could tie my thread into that little green swirl right below it. Only problem was when I flipped my fabric over to run my thread under it, I accidentally tied into this one. And I came over and did the whole center over here 85 stitches of it anyway. I wound up having to frog all of it. Every bit of it. All 85 stitches. <laughs> I had to start over. <laughs> so I didn't want to leave it like that. And so I went ahead and did start over uh, for today. And I did get um, those stitches back in plus more. So I'll show you my progress and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. Here's where, see I was tying into this green swirl right here to start the green leaf, but I accidentally tied in right here in my, this whole section here, those two leaves and all, they were down here. I had to frog them all out and stitch them over. And then I went on up and I did this section here above it. And now I've got the two sides that have the pumpkins hanging out from there, and that will be the whole topper done once I get that done. But because it was so late when I got started today, and then because the frog visited me, I only got in 144 stitches total today. Keeper. I did 85 more, but can't count those because I had to rip them out. So I decided to, to go for the smallest number of stitches on the stitch count options for the 24 hours of cross stitch and I went with 120 stitches so it's met. It, it will qualify for, for hitting that letter and I'm okay with that. I had also intended to use this Autumn Arbor for a prompt in Cheryl McKinney's group where you just stitch on something where you feel disconnected to it. And I thought right now I am a bit disconnected from autumn. You know, it's hot, the sun is shining, the flowers are blooming. None of the autumn weather or scenery is out there, and so that was a bit of a disconnect for me. And I had intended to use it for that as well. But that requires a minimum of 300 stitches. And 
it's late and I don't have time to get 300 stitches tonight. So I will decide tomorrow if I'm going to pick that up again and do more stitches and get that prompt or if I will either see if another whip will be something I'm disconnected with or I'll do penalty stitches and work on whatever I want to. <laughs> Wait and find out. <laughs> Until my next update, I hope you have a great time of stitching. I hope you are safe and healthy. I don't think this pandemic is over and I just want you to be careful and not get lax about it. And um, I hope that you've had some peace and quiet in your day today too. Happy stitching everyone. Good night. Hello everyone, welcome. Today is Tuesday, it is the 23rd of June and I'm here to give you a stitching update. I'm very tickled that I'm here to give you a stitching update because I wasn't sure I was gonna get to do that today. I had a busy morning and it was a wonderful privilege this morning. <laughs> I actually helped to provide a baby shower for a young woman in our Bible study and um, it was delightful to be able to shower her with uh, gifts and assistance and but most of all with friendship. She and her husband have only been in this community for about a year and um, she joined our Bible study uh, this past year and then found out she was pregnant and so we decided that since she didn't know anybody else in the community, we needed to step up and do something for her. So that was this morning, and I helped to host that and had a lovely time doing it. It was an odd way to give a baby shower. You know, everybody brought their own chairs. We were outside. Uh, we had on masks. <laughs> but that's, you know, she'll never forget it, that's for sure. So I wasn't sure I'd get a lot of stitching time done, but I am tickled to be able to give you my update today. But before I do, I have to ask my sister Stephanie to please look away because this is a future gift for you and I'm not ready for you to see it yet. So for everyone else, this is what I worked on today. This is the title. This was a mania start. It's by Erica Michaels and you can see the colorway that was used there. There are two colors. There's a primary color and a contrasting color. And I'm doing that too, but I have a different primary color and I tried to match my contrasting color as close to the original as I could, but this is what I'm working on. And for Mania, I got the top row stitched. So today I got the second row stitched and the three motifs on the side, which gives you the full color palette now. So I'm excited about that. And I'm real happy to say that I was able, with this stitching of 401 stitches, to meet a prompt, my final prompt in a week's challenge in, in uh, Cheryl McKinney's group. So it was an interesting way to meet it, though. I'll tell you about that. Stephanie, you can look back now. Um, the prompt was actually to stitch on a piece that you felt disconnected to. And... Um, it probably would have been really good for me to stitch on um, Autumn Harbor because it's not autumn right now, so that was the disconnect. But I stitched on it yesterday, and if you recall, I mentioned that I had to frog like 85 stitches <laughs> because I started them in the wrong place on the wrong little cur little squirrel, squirrel a cue. Anyway, I did frog it, I did restitch it, and I even stitched more than that but I just didn't want to pick it back up today, if you know what I mean. I wasn't ready to face it again, and so I really wanted to stitch on this, and it didn't fit the prompt, because I feel very connected to this piece because it's for my sister. <laughs> so I decided to take penalty stitches, and so today I stitched 401 stitches, and so I will meet the minimum of 300 stitches plus the 100 for penalty, and I'll, I'll have that prompt completed, and um, that's, you know, that makes you feel like you've accomplished something. I like stitching for prompts. I like goals. I'm, I'm very much a, a goal person. So you probably know that from watching my channel. Speaking of which, I have new plans for the end of June. I had originally decided I was gonna stitch on all my whips this month that are not Christmas because next month is all about Christmas. And I still may get to do that. But I have a mania start that 
is called Brave Flags that I really wanted to get finished for July 4th. And it's got a lot of stitching left on it. So I'm gonna work on that tomorrow and I'm gonna see how far I get. And then I'll estimate how far, how many days it might take to finish it. Because I'm either gonna finish it in June and have it ready for July 4th to display or I wanna get it close enough to a finish to where I know that July 4th I could stitch it and finish it on the 4th. So I'm gonna do one or the other. And I won't know that until I stitch on it tomorrow. So hopefully I'll be able to give you my decision by then. Anyway, those are my plans. I won't keep you. Um, it's late. It was probably 11 or so when I finished stitching. And it's uh, after 11.30 now. So I need to get on to bed. Coco gave up on me a long time ago. I'll tell you a very quick story. We can all use a laugh. So I hope this will bring a smile to your face. But I took Coco out to potty tonight. And all of a sudden, she noticed movement in the grass. And, and then she stuck her little nose down close to see what it was, and it jumped. It was a frog. She'd never seen a frog before. And so she jumped too. And she stuck her little nose down to try to see what that big little creature was. And she was trying to sniff it, and the frog jumped again. Coco jumped again. It scared her. I wish I'd had my phone with me. It would have been the cutest video if you could have even seen it because it was dark. But uh, I hope she sees the frog again and I hope I have my phone with me. So I just, you just picture it in your mind. This, this big dog <laughs> scared to death of this little frog. It was real cute. Anyway, I'm going to hit the hay. I'm going to bed. It's late and I'm probably punchy. I downloaded the pandemic. Uh, pattern from Long Dog Samplers. It's the only Long Dog I own. It was free, um, and I've downloaded it. Don't know if I'll ever stitch it. I would like to, I think, but um, it is just overwhelming for me to think about starting it with all that I have going right now. Um, as you know, you've seen all the starts if you've watched. So, um, and then there's going to be a whole lot more, you know, come July. Um, but I will say that um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are. I hope you have things in your life you're looking forward to. And um, just remember to stay safe. And as uh, Jason Marie says, be kind. All of you, be kind. We can get a lot more done with kindness than we can anything else. And... Um, and I'm all for having it. I'm all for getting things done, moving forward in a much better community. Um, but I think we get further with kindness. So I'll just add that. Um, love one another. Like Martin Luther King said, he chooses love. And I do too. So, good night. I hope you have a great week of stitching and um, get some rest, take care of yourself, um, and I'll talk to you soon. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is Wednesday, it is the 23rd of June, and I am here to share with you some happy mail that I've received today. I actually got Part of it yesterday, late, um, a box arrived for me, and it was from a dear friend, um, Victoria, from uh, Victoria's Crafty Room, and Victoria had contacted me um, just a few days before that and told me that when she moved recently, she uncovered um, in some of her belongings a pair of Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls, and she thought that they would make a great addition to the piece that I'm stitching for my friend Cheryl for Christmas, and maybe to give her that piece together with those dolls. So uh, I had this idea in my head of getting this piece that I'm working on framed, and then having the two dolls holding the frame and um, have my friend find it that way. So anyway, 
big dolls. I was so surprised, so pleased at the size of them. And I have them uh, in my uh, bedroom safe and away from Coco. And that's why I'm not sharing them with them today. I don't want her to try to uh, pull their hair or eat their clothing because anything soft fabric like that, she thinks is her toy. And she lives to destroy it. <laughs> so, but then Victoria also gave me another big surprise. She sent me one of her project bags. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this fabric. Victoria's gorgeous. I love the colors. Absolutely love them. I love her label that she has inside, Victoria's Crafty Room, that's inside on the fabric, and it's a vinyl front. She makes a zipper pull out of her DMC, and she's added this little DMC 25 charm, and right here's a little charm that says handmade. So, Victoria, thank you so much. I can't wait to put it to good use. Um, I, I didn't put anything in it until I shared it with y'all, so now I'm going to be able to go put something in that to get, get me up something else. Uh, Victoria also includes a uh, skein of floss with her bags, and I was so tickled to see it was number 433 because I'm using that in a lot <laughs> right now for some reason. It is a very popular color. Well, then the other thing I wanted to share with you that I got for Happy Mail, I got today. And we say this sometimes that it just, we were blown away, but I was blown away. I really was. I got a message uh, recently from um, a lady who subscribes to my channel and sends me lovely comments. And, and we've been emailing a little bit, getting to know each other. And um, she told me that she had some patterns that she either had completed or found that she had two of, or she had looked at and decided she would never stitch. Either they weren't her interest anymore or they were too um, advanced for what she wanted to work on. Uh, but for whatever reason, she watches my channel enough to know that she thought I would like some of her patterns that she was um, gonna de-stash and that if I didn't want to keep all of them she knew that I do giveaways and that I would pass it along to a good stitcher it would have a good home so uh, Perky I want to thank you so much um, for the package because before I even share it with everyone I just have to tell you again what joy this brought to me just to open it and look through it. I actually sat down at the supper table. My husband was out late today and my son and I had already had to eat dinner so he could go on down to, you know, his apartment and start sort of decompressing for the day and get ready for bed. He, he can't eat too late in the evening because he has to go to sleep pretty early. Um, and my husband was uh, delayed and so uh, we had individual homemade pizza tonight, so I was able to just hold his back and let him pop in the oven when he got home because I was on my choir practice, on my Zoom choir practice when he got in. But um, I went in and sat with him while he ate his dinner, and I was telling him how amazed I was today at getting Perky's package and, and how generous um Perky was to send me all of this and so what I think I'm gonna do is just kind of go through and show you what I got and don't be surprised if you see a great deal of it next year in mania <laughs> I sent Perky a message right back after I opened everything today and said I think I've just started kidding up next year's mania but a lot of these I will be stitching, and then there will be a few that I will be uh, gifting um, through giveaways, But um, so you may get to see them again for that. But right now, I'm not anticipating any milestones anytime soon. Just had a big one, and um, it'll take me a while, to, I think, to get another subscriber milestone. So my next big one will probably be my four-year anniversary on Floss Tube, which will be January. So there's there's some time. 
Well, let's get to it. Let me share with you what I got today. Okay, this is a heart and hand pattern called Bluebird Sampler. And I had, I had not seen it before to my knowledge, but I, I like it. And the embellishments have come with it. So there's a, a clear, there, there's a little clear plastic bag in here with all the beads. So there's just a, f a few dark beads that go with this. But isn't that precious? And there's a personalized alphabet, so you can put your initials and the year. So that's the first one. The second one that I want to share with you is called A Holiday Cheer. It's a Bent Creek. I can't wait to start this. Look at that sheep. And I love the fact that it's with a variegated floss because it just looks precious. That wool, just huge. And, and he's wrapped up like a present. Love it. This was thrilling to me to get these two patterns because I don't have hardly anything for um, St. Patrick's Day. So um, I decided that I have one project that's a St. Patrick's Day um, photo booth pattern, and I haven't had the opportunity to start it. I was going to start it in Mania, and I went to get it, and I couldn't get the floss in time. So it's still there, and um, I got two St. Patty's Day patterns in this package today. The first one's a Flip It by Lizzie Kate that just say is St. Patrick's got the little hat with the uh, clover and the second one is a Heinzit. Um it's a kit as well the beads are in there in fact the beads are in front of the pattern so I'm gonna move them real quick sorry for the crinkling but um, here's the the bead pack and then here's the pattern and it just says Lucky Leprechaun. And the beads are actually the pot of gold. Now that's precious. So now I have two for St. Patrick's Day. Then this one is a Lizzie Kate, so cute. On Christmas morn, and the pillow says, on Christmas morn, love was born. So cute. There's a um, thistles pattern. I guess it's um, thistles. I hadn't seen this one before, but it says what happens in the chicken coop stays in the chicken coop. I don't know, Chelsea, is that one you would like? Have you seen that one before? So cute. And those of you who have different types of chickens could probably personalize what types you have. But I thought that was cute, very cute. I love Stony Creek, and this is a beautiful piece called Hope. It's um, Brave World Quilt Block. I love it, it's so pretty. And it's supposed to have a couple of buttons on it, which I'll have to order. But is that not one of the loveliest things you've seen in a while? Just beautiful. And then, oh, this one is so cute. And this one, I'll have to ask Stephanie Schaffner, do you have this one? It's uh, post stitches. It says, things haven't been the same since that house fell on my sister. I bet you have it because it's a Suvillus. But um, I just thought that was precious. So funny. So funny. This is a um, Brenda Gervais. I do love Brenda Gervais. I've seen this one stitched. I think it's precious. I had uh, put it on my wish list. And now here it is. Easter Peep. 
I think that little chick is cute as can be. Just cute as can be. Then this one is precious. This is an autumn bell pull. And um, I love the colors and the pictures. It has a great saying down the front. It's hard to read it on the cover, but I would, if I were to read it, I'd have to open the pattern and show you the pattern to read it. So, um, but I really like it. And here's another Stony Creek Bell Pool called Let It Snow Banner. And I just love this one. And I would probably convert the puppy dog, of course, to Coco. Because that would be about her right size. And this is a traditional sampler chart by uh, Myra Blackburn. And um, Country Cottage Sampler is what it says here. But I really love it. And if you know me, you'll know why I love it. Everything is balanced. <laughs> Everything is symmetrical. Two here, man and woman here. You've got all of your sides are balanced. Even to the pots right here with the flowers in them. And the border is beautiful. So, very happy to have that. And then, this is an older publication um, by Raindrop, which is part of the Stony Creek collection. Um, and I could tell it was a Stony Creek when I looked at it. I'm going to open this and show you a few things, but here's what's in this book. There's your three wise men. There's some mallard in front of the window and the wreath. Then you've got your poinsettias, peace on earth for the dove. Then in addition to that, you have the shepherds. You have that beautiful birdhouse with poinsettias. You've got a Santa and a sleigh and an angel. You even got the little drummer boy and you've got a topper for a stocking. All in this pamphlet. Jackpot! <laughs> and then on top of that, the final thing is the kit, Yuletide Village. An entire kit. This is a dimensions kit, and it's a Charles Wasaki. Um, gorgeous. Now you understand why, as I opened that package, I just kept saying, oh my, oh my, oh my. Um, I, as I, you know, went deeper and deeper into this stack, I just couldn't fathom. Um, it was like Christmas. It really was. So, um, thank you so much. Thank you very, very much, Perky. Um, as I told you today, you brought me great joy. And I'm hoping that I can stitch quite a bit of this and share some of it and then share some of it after I stitch it. Um, one more thing that Perky sent me, I was so tickled to get, was some thread drops. I haven't tried these yet. I haven't tried these that are, are this shape. So I'm looking forward to that. There is a kid in here, you know, that I could use these with. <laughs> anyway, um, Thanks for letting me go through that. Uh, I did it to just be able to show the fact that we have such kind and generous people. And I just wanted to thank Perky and I wanted to thank, thank Victoria for their thoughtfulness. I told Victoria when I wrote her a little message tonight, I said, not only did you send me a gift for my friend, you were thoughtful enough to include a gift for me too. Uh, what a surprise. Um, so I hope that being reminded of um, just kindness, how acts of kindness impact other people, uh, 
will um, bring it to your mind what you might could do for someone else or remind you of an act of kindness that you were the recipient of uh, recently and, and bring it back to your mind and, and let that be an encouragement to you. Um, so that's all I have to share today. I'm working on um, Brave Flags, but I'll be working on it again, hopefully some tomorrow. And I, so I won't share that with you until I'm finished working on it or I've finished it, whichever comes, you know, <laughs> before the end of the video. <laughs> oh, everyone, have a great day tomorrow. Enjoy your stitching. Um, please stay safe and please stay kind. Good night. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is Thursday, the 25th of June, and I am so tickled to be able to come to you this evening and tell you that I have a finish. I was working really hard on this one. Um, I wanted to finish it in time to use it if I can on July 4th. This is Brave Flags. And I'm thinking in order to use it on the 4th, I probably would have to make it into a flat fold. So I'm gonna look and see if I've got the supplies. And if so, I might be working on that tomorrow. But anyway, this is a beautiful piece. It is um, was designed by Terry Richards and it was put out by Shepherd's Bush. And so this is a Shepherd's Bush pamphlet. Uh, it's a 2005 piece, but I, and thrilled to tell you I was still able to get every one of the buttons that are on here, and there are several. I'll point them out on my finished piece. But I had a prompt in Cheryl McKinney's group that I had to finish today, and um, so I worked really hard to, to get that done, And um, but basically you had to work on a piece that was two-thirds of the way finished. And this one wasn't quite there, so I had to work on it a while today until I got it to the two-thirds point. And then I put in my picture and I finished it. And so now I've posted that and uh, tomorrow I'll be um, working or starting on working on the new prompts for the week. So let me show you my finish. Here it is. I think it's beautiful. I use the DMC, so I can tell you that one of the things I've noticed from looking back at it is this blue coat here, uh, when it was in the call for threads, was a little more variegated um, than this one. But that is about the only difference that I can really tell. Um, and you wouldn't know that if you hadn't seen the pattern, and I think it looks just fine. But look at all these beautiful buttons. Here is a patriotic heart that he's holding in this hand. He's got a big red heart up here on his shoulder. And then he's got the star up here in the flag. And then there are two stars here. Now these were the same button, they're hand painted. So they're a little different as to how they turned out. And that's okay, because each of the hearts that you stitch are different. So I think it looks really cute, but it gives it a three dimension. And I think that may be the reason I'm looking at this as maybe a flat fold because, you know, to put that under glass, you'd have to really make sure you had a, a lot of space in there for the glass. And I think I'm just gonna make this a flat fold and so I can put it out. But I'm so excited. This was one of my uh, mania starts. And so this another mania finish, I'm tickled to death. Um, that I was able to get that done. And, um, you know, I had said I was gonna try to finish things that would take me two to three days. And this one took me two days uh, of lots of stitching and late into the evening tonight, but um, to get all the buttons put on. <laughs> I didn't count the buttons in my stitches though. Um, so anyway, I hope that, uh, that you enjoy it. I hope that you uh, like it for the season. I think that's wonderful. So. I have a wonderful story to share with you from today. We took Coco to the dog sitter today and we left her there. It was her first day at daycare, doggy daycare, with our couple that we've gotten to know that have been so kind and so patient. Uh, if you followed the story, you know the first visit was uh, horrible and the second visit was a 
much improved. The third visit was like a different animal. And so we went ahead and booked them to watch her for a day. And my husband dropped her off this morning at um, 9.30. And um, I was uh, had taken my son to an appointment, and so we weren't back until about 11, 10.30ish. And um, my husband, we met back here at the house, and we went um, to lunch. We met a couple from our church. We picked them up on the way and actually took them to lunch in Dahlonega, Georgia. So, interestingly enough, the um, the man of this couple, the husband in this couple, had been recently exposed to COVID-19 and had been tested and he got his results back on Father's Day and they were negative, so that was great. So we felt very comfortable, you know, going to lunch with this couple. So, um, before we even left the house, before we had even left our home, so within the first hour, we got photos, photos on our phone and a message that um, Coco was still a little leery of Fred, the Border Collie that they, you know, that's their dog, but that they were tolerating each other very well, that she was, you know, walking around and getting acquainted. It was the first time she'd been inside their house. She'd always been out in the yard when we took her over for a meet and greet for about an hour just to play outside with Fred. Um, and so it was great to get those pictures and to see that she was kind of, you know, walking around. She wasn't huddled over in a corner anywhere or anything like that. She was actually exploring the house. So then about, uh, I would say, a couple of hours into the visit, um, we were at lunch with our friends, and we got three more pictures, and they were outside playing, and you could see they, they gave us different pictures, you know, from that playtime, and so you could see that during that playtime, each picture they took, Coco's getting a little bit closer to Fred, you know, in her walking and playing around. And it's a still shot, so it's you, you can just kind of judge the proximity of where they are. But the best part about it was we got pictures at least two more times. One, she was um, in the kitchen, and she was looking up at Giselle, and she was... Um, waiting for a little treat and she looks like she's smiling she just looks like she's so happy and then um one of the last pictures we got she was on the couch and she looks like she's happy you know just as just as at home as she could be and um and then the last message i got from giselle when i texted her and said we're on our way you know we'll be there in a little bit she wrote back and she said, Coco gets an A today. She has really decided she likes Fred. In fact, Fred was laying in the floor and Coco went over to Fred and licked him right on the face. <laughs> I just love it. So uh, our friend was just ecstatic. She said, I wish I'd had my camera in my hand, you know, her phone. She said, I didn't have it with me to take a picture. And it probably just happened really quick anyway, but... I can't tell you how happy that made me. It really, really did. The fact that not only did my puppy have a playmate now that she can go play with when we have to go, you know, out of town or have a day that we have so much going on that we don't want to leave her at home alone, um, that we can book this daycare. And it's, um, it's in a lovely setting. The backyard is huge and it's shaded and there's fence everywhere so that she can run and roam. And we don't even have a fenced-in yard at home, so she's always on the leash when I take her out. And they have a doggy door. We don't have that here. So she can come and go in and out as much as she wants, and she is, loves the outside. So I think that it was a wonderful uh, choice, and I got to write my friend and thank her for the reference, you know, for the referral. Um, but I will tell you, we had the best time yesterday with our friends at lunch because I was relaxed and not worried about Coco at all because I was getting reports about her and pictures, you know, and I could see how comfortable she seemed to be feeling. And so when we got to the place to pick her up, uh, the lady was holding her at the door, you know, letting her look for us because she can tell when we hit the driveway, her dog starts barking. 
And so she brought her to the door so she could see us come. And we got out of the car. And as soon as we parked and got out, then she came outside with Coco and let Coco run to us. And what I found very interesting is Coco would run to my husband and greet him. And then she would run to me and love on me. And then she would run back to this lady and love on her. She had her in the triangle of the three of us. So she's her person, you know, and I just love it. I just think it's, we're so fortunate that this lady really, really loves dogs and she loves my dog and my dog can tell that, you know, and she loves her back. And I think that's wonderful. So that has been a bit of a process and I cannot thank this couple enough for their patience, for letting us come three times to meet their dog and stay about an hour, hour and a half with them. And that's at no charge to us. So um, I'm sure they're used to a one-time thing, but they were so concerned for her, um, so concerned at how fearful she was of other dogs. And of course, y'all know that's because she got bit. And um, we think anyway, and they do too. Um, so now she's learned she can trust Fred. You know, Fred's not gonna hurt her. And so now she's got a friend. And, um, but I think a lot of that is to, uh, to credit this couple for how well they handled her, uh, how well they handled Fred, um, and to my husband, I have to say. Uh, he really got involved and walked Fred and Coco together the last two visits. And then he suggested they take Fred off leash. He said she can outrun him. He's older, he's eight years old, and he doesn't move very fast. And if she wants to get away, she can. And you know what? I think that was a big part of her feeling more comfortable. So thanks for letting me share my little family story about Coco. And if I can, I will put in the montage of pictures at the end of her day with Fred. Thanks for letting me share something so trivial and, and personal, but it's important to me. And if you love your animals, I know you'll understand. So thanks for humoring me. Um, so that's my stitching for today. And I'm looking forward to uh, Friday and um, getting some more stitching done, maybe getting some cleaning done. <laughs> I need to do that today. And, um, and then I'm looking forward to Saturday. I have a planning meeting with a friend from church to work maybe on planning a virtual event for a fundraiser uh, instead of the big shopping event that we normally put on. So I've got great things coming this weekend and I just hope uh, that in addition to those wonderful social things that I will also get to continue doing as much stitching as I've been doing. I hope you do too. I hope you get lots of stitching time and I hope that you are uh, enjoying your weekend. So it'll be starting tomorrow. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina, and today is the 29th of June. Uh, it's in the morning, and I am here to give you an update for my stitching from yesterday. <laughs> I stopped stitching last night pretty late and I started to record my progress and I was tongue-tied, I guess, or sleepy. I think I must have restarted that little segment about seven or eight times and I decided, you know, <laughs> this is a sign. <laughs> I need to go to bed. <laughs> so this morning before I even get started on anything today, I wanted to come in here and record uh, for you my progress from yesterday and uh, show you what I stitched on and tell you about it and uh, that way I could start the day fresh and you may see me again today hopefully if I have enough progress to share with you but with everything that's been going on in our community in the world and then how it has infiltrated our community um, I know there's been uh, friends of mine who've had their feelings hurt terribly, and there have been those of you who feel frustrated and not heard, and there's just, there's so much going on, and it's a bit overwhelming, and it is, um, in some cases, saddening, and so yesterday, I just felt the need to stitch on my Seeking Refuge, so I pulled it out. And this is um, 
the piece I actually started because of the pandemic. <clears throat> I started this in, I guess, in an effort to be able to stitch something that I would forever remember because after events like that occur and enough time goes on, you talk about it, but you don't remember all of the feelings that you had and, and just how much it affected or changed your life. So this was my remembrance piece. And it was also, uh, for me, um, a beautiful piece that even though I was commemorating something that was uh, quite catastrophic for our, for our world, uh, as a you know pandemic went everywhere, it allowed me the opportunity to exactly what it says. Use my needle and thread to get away from the angst and the anxiety that was associated with being closeted up at home. Um, you know, you can call it anything you want, shelter in place, but we felt you know, restricted. We couldn't go where we wanted to go. So this piece has great meaning for me. And now I think because of uh, additional events that have occurred, it has taken on even more meaning because the st first statement says, when my world seems to be out of control. Uh, so this is going to be a piece to remind me, to remind me to listen, to remind me to hear what others have to say. Um, and to always be willing to learn and think and, um, you know, internalize what it is that uh, I need to. So it was a good piece to work on today for all those reasons. And I want to show you my progress. When I started on this piece, I had three rows of the roof done across the bottom. And so yesterday I finished the entire roof all of the 310 in here, and I had the top of one chimney stitch, but I didn't have the top of the second one stitched, so while I had my 310 on my needle, I just went on over and did that as well. My total stitches yesterday were 618, and that was wonderful. I, I actually did it more of a goal of, I wanna finish the roof, and then I counted the stitches. <laughs> I was able to use this for a prompt. It was um, in Cheryl McKinney's group, uh, it was a mystery week. And one of the um, five prompts that I'm working on said that you were to stitch on a project that had an object on it that would use a light bulb. Well, definitely a house uses a light bulb. So I was able to uh, take those 618 stitches and apply it to that prompt, so I got more than double what was required for. So very pleased with that progress. So today I have to choose. I can either stitch on gathering eggs because I haven't touched it yet this month, or I can stitch on um, one other of my whips that I haven't touched yet and I can't even remember right now uh, what it was. Um, Oh, sheep virtues. Or, <laughs> if I'm nervous about it, which I am a little bit, uh, I can pick up my um, friends and I could put an extra day in friends to get a head start on that large middle section of heavy confetti that I've got to do in the month of July. So, I think what I may do is a combination. I think I may go ahead and do gathering eggs this morning um, and, and you know, get that done uh, for, you know, a few hours maybe too if I get that much time. And then this evening when I get back to stitching, uh, I may get a head start on my friends. Uh, usually Coco uh, takes a good nap in the morning and that's when I'll stitch uh, the first time. And then in the evening after we're all back home and we've had dinner and people have kind of settled in. She settles down and, and hangs out with my husband or my son a little bit while I stitch. So that gives me a second time of the day that I can usually count on for a little bit of stitching. And I might get to start uh, friends during that time. So we'll see. Well, thank you for so, so much for letting me share with you my stitching um, and my progress as I go. 
and um, for coming back and sharing time with me. I, I appreciate that so much, and I hope that you are staying safe. This pandemic is not over. It's really not. We're going to have another big surge of it, I'm afraid, and um, I, I agree with some of the other floss tube uh, videos I've seen where people have asked us to please wear a mask. Uh, it is not just for your safety. It's for your neighbors and your friends' um, safety as well. So uh, please do that. Try to avoid, um, you know, getting too close to people uh, in large crowds and things like that still. Um, just, you know, use good, good sense. But in the meantime, while you're at home, I hope you enjoy your stitching. Till next time. Well, hello, I'm back again. It is still Monday, it is the 29th of June, and I'm here to give you an update on the stitching I've been able to get done today. I have been working on my whip gathering eggs. I am working on that with a very uh, new friend from Floss Tube, and we're doing this together, and this is only the second time I've worked on it, so I wanna show you my progress. I continued working on the border today, and I had part of the top border done to about right here. And so I did um, just 206 stitches to finish the top and start down the sides. But I think for now, I'm gonna to work on the border till I get far enough down that I can start working across the top of the picture as well. So that's my progress. That was enough to meet the prompt I was working on. And this prompt that I was uh, stitching for is to stitch on a piece that you have stitched on by the light of a window. And I have a big window here in my sewing room. And so I sat right next to it today as I was stitching and um, made that fit uh, for the prompt. So I'm excited about that. Um, so now I'm gonna be leaving here in a few minutes to do some errands with my husband. And whether or not I get to stitch any more tonight, see but then that will determine whether or not I pick up my friends or whether I pick up um, something different uh, you know that I just want to get a little more work on but I will definitely come back and share it with you if I'm able to stitch anymore so in the meantime happy stitching